Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the environmental impact of mineral extraction. So what impact does taking minerals out of the earth actually have on the earth and the environment? And this is for your A-level in environmental science. After you've watched this video, don't forget there's a set of recall questions, a set of flashcards just waiting for you for free on the website. level environmental science. Topic 2. The physical environment. Lesson 17. Environmental impacts of mineral extraction. All stages in the mining process, including exploration, extraction and processing, can cause damage to the environment. The damage is often not confined to the mined area, as pollutants are mobile, meaning they can disperse from the mine to other areas. In your exam, you are expected to be able to discuss the environmental impacts of mining and the methods used to reduce them. Habitat loss. Each mineral extraction method will cause varying degrees of habitat loss. Surface or open cast mining will cause the largest amount of habitat loss as a large portion must be removed in order to access the shallow and wide deposit. For example, an area of woodland may need to be deforested. Deep mining causes less habitat loss as less material is removed at the surface to access the deposit. In order to reduce the effects of habitat loss, the mining company has a few options. Firstly, they could pledge to restore the habitat once the extraction has been completed, meaning it can be used for something else and does not remain derelict. A good case study for this is the Eden Project in Cornwall, which was built on old quarry sites. Directional drilling can only be used for certain materials, such as oil and gas. This is where drilling can occur horizontally and not just vertically. As a result, the drill site does not need to be positioned directly above the deposit. Therefore, if the deposit is situated under a protected area, for example, the drilling can occur outside of it. Finally, if the area is habitat to a particularly vulnerable species of plant or animal, then the permission to mine there may only be granted if that species is relocated safely prior to commencement. Dust pollution. Dust pollution is another large problem when mining. A lot of material is removed via explosions which releases large amounts of particulate matter, or dust, into the atmosphere. Furthermore, large machinery can also kick up lots of dust. This dust can fall onto the leaves of plants and reduce the amount of light absorbed, thereby reducing the rate of photosynthesis. The inhalation of large amounts of dust can cause respiratory illnesses in animals. In order to solve this problem, water sprays can be used. The spraying of water into the air coats the dust, making it denser so it will fall to the ground. This technique reduces the mobility of the dust and therefore reduces its severity as a pollutant. Noise pollution. The mine vehicles and explosives are also the two main causes of noise pollution around mine sites. Noise pollution can change the behaviour of animals living in the surrounding area. It can cause stress responses and in extreme cases, cause death or prevent breeding. People living close to the mine will also be disturbed by the loud noises. To fix this, mine sites can install baffle mounds, which absorb and deflect the noise. A baffle mound can be a tree, a fence or an embankment. The mining engineers should only blast during the daytime and give plenty of warning to the local population so they know when to expect it. This should reduce the problems caused by the excessive noise. Greenhouse gases. The use of large machinery on the mine site is essential, but unfortunately, the machines tend to run on fossil fuels. The combustion of these fossil fuels releases harmful greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which absorb infrared radiation, contributing to the warming of the atmosphere. Not only that, but the combustion also releases smoke and other toxins into the atmosphere. To prevent this, the move to electric or hydrogen powered machinery would be best, as they do not release greenhouse gases or involve internal combustion. Habitat fragmentation. 
Large transport lorries are used to transport material to and from the mine site. This can cause traffic congestion in the areas surrounding the mine. This may cause the mining company to build their own infrastructure, whether that be a road or a railway. The building of transport routes often causes habitat fragmentation, where populations are separated and cannot mix freely, which can often mean they do not interbreed. This decreases the size of the gene pool and therefore increases their vulnerability to changes in the area. It would be much better for the environment if the infrastructure was already present and animal crossing help was used, such as back bridges. Spoil heaps. Spoil heaps are large accumulations of solid waste material brought out of the mine, like overburden. The waste is piled up to form a mountainous structure that reduces the aesthetics of an area. It's an eyesore. A method used to reduce this problem is by planting trees and other plants on the spoil heap, which help to blend in more with the surrounding area, especially in more rural locations. This also helps to make the spoil heap more stable as the root networks help to bind the structure together. Another way of making the spoil heap more stable is by reducing the angle of the slope by removing the uppermost section and flattening it out. Both of these methods reduce the chance of slipping material which can be devastating. There is a case study you could learn here that happened in Wales in the 1900s where a spoil heap collapsed over a school killing children and teachers that were on site. This is a clear example of how dangerous spoil heaps can be and the importance of making them more stable. Another environmental impact that can be caused by spoil heaps is the production of toxic leachate sometimes referred to as acid mine drainage. This is formed when precipitation percolates through the spoil heap, dissolving any metals contained within the waste material, giving the solution an acidic pH. It can also be formed as precipitation moves through the mine itself. That is why it is important that any water that has moved through the mine site is collected. The acid mine drainage water can lower the pH of nearby water bodies, moving the conditions out of the range of tolerance of species that live there. This can lead to enzymes denaturing, which in severe cases can lead to death. The drainage water also contains toxic heavy metals, which can cause harm to the organisms in certain concentrations. To manage this, any drainage water needs to be collected and neutralised using an alkali substance such as calcium carbonate. By returning the pH close to neutral, it also reduces the solubility of the metals dissolved, so they precipitate out, meaning the water can then be released safely into the environment. Drainage systems. Drainage systems are also required to prevent flooding of the mine site. When designing a mine, the hydrology needs to be taken into account. So, whether the rocks are permeable or impermeable, and the risk of flooding both on site and in nearby water bodies if water was to run off. As part of the design process, a collection lagoon or reservoir should be included to collect water from across the site and release it slowly to prevent flooding in rivers and ponds nearby. The water is also likely to be turbid due to the large volume of dust and dirt particles in the mine. If this water was to be released into a nearby water body, then it would cause a reduction in light intensity killing submerged plants. This can be fixed by ensuring the water is kept still inside the collection lagoons, so sedimentation can occur. This is where the suspended solids will sink to the bottom of the lagoon, reducing the turbidity of the water. The final impact we're going to look at is subsidence. This is where the ground at the surface above the mine can slip slightly, causing cracks in foundations and buildings. This is particularly likely if a mine site has been restored. So it is important that upon restoration, any material is compacted down as much as possible to remove any air pockets or holes. Support pillars can also be added in locations where deep mining has taken place to reduce the chance of slipping at the surface. When talking about subsidence, we are not talking about the giant sinkholes common in places such as Florida. Subsidence tends to only be small slippages that cause minor structural damage. We have now looked at a range of environmental impacts caused by mining, as well as the methods used to reduce them. Remember, we are going to need to continue extracting minerals from the ground, but we need to make sure we are doing it sustainably. 
By applying these conservative measures, it should reduce the impact on the environment. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.